O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Isaiah 40 and verse 9. Our journey through the book of Isaiah brings us now to Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah 40, the prophet is described who God is, his power, and how he treats us. Isaiah also recommended us to answer the divine calling. We are going to study about that today in lesson number 8 entitled, Comfort, Comfort My People. Uh, welcome to the series entitled Isaiah. My name is Rudy Vivanco and today we're going to study chapter 40 of Isaiah where we will find comfort and also the preparation to receive that comfort along with the reaction, the first reaction to that blessing which is telling everyone through evangelism. We will also uh, talk about a strength which is necessary to live this life and finally the natural response to all the blessings of God which has to do with worship. Let's pray together and let's dive in in the study for this week. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much again for giving us one more opportunity to study together. I pray, Lord, that your book will be open, our minds will be open, and that uh, we will meet, be able to hear your voice. Bless us today, Father. Send your Holy Spirit so that we may learn about you and from you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So chapter 40 of Isaiah starts with the comfort that God has to offer his people. Let's go to verse 1 for this. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1, the Bible says, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says, the, says your God. Chapters 1 to 39 of Isaiah covers events in the history of Israel during the prophet's life and some predictions about the future of, of uh, the nations around, around them. From chapter 40 on, the message is, is focused on the future. It revolves around two main events. Number one, the Babylonian exile and the return of the remnant. And number two, the coming of the Messiah. The coming of the Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 39, which is the chapter we studied last week, one of them, Hezekiah the king had shown his wealth to the Babylonian. You remember this. That wealth and, and the people in Jerusalem would be taken to Babylon as a consequence for their sins. Remember all that happened in chapter 39. This is now the consequence of their actions. Nevertheless, nevertheless, and this is important, dear friend, and, and according to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, God will forgive His people and He will comfort them because that's who our God is. Though we go away from Him, though we decide to rebel against Him, He will always be ready to receive us back, to forgive us because He loves us. And again, this is what He is going to show us through Isaiah chapter 40. For this, He calls His people to be prepared so that they may receive the comfort that He has to offer. This is found in verse uh, 3 of Isaiah chapter 40. So let, let's read it together. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3, the Bible says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a, a highway for our God. How will God come for His people? Is the, is, the, is the fair question here. There are two voices that explain it according to Isaiah chapter 40. The first voice is found in Isaiah 40 verses 3 through 5. And, and that first voice says, it, it is preparing the way for the presence of God being fully manifested in our lives. And then the voice number two that we find in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 through 8, is the one that says that it is through the word, is the, through the word of God. And, and that word of God, says Isaiah in verses 6 through 8, that it stands forever. It's through the word of God that we receive that we receive that preparation, that we get ready to um, receive, to receive the comfort that God has to offer to his people. Now, friends, remember that after exile. The people of God got uh, what they had rejected back. What is this? The presence of God and His Word. John the Baptist explained what we should do to prepare. And this you will find in Luke chapter 3 and verses 2 through, through 8, when John the Baptist comes alone to prepare the way to the Messiah, for the Messiah. And this is how, this is what the, 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 his message was about. Repenting 
and rejecting sin. Basically, repent and sin no more. So we can receive the comfort of God's presence and forgiveness. So how do we re- how do we prepare ourselves to receive the comfort of God's presence and, and His forgiveness? Simply repenting from our sins and getting running away from from any sin, anything that may separate us from Him. This, dear, dear friends, when comfort from God comes to us, the brings a reaction from our souls, and that is found in Isaiah chapter forty. In verse 9, Isaiah chapter 40, in verse 9, the Bible says, O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Once the way is prepared, Zion must introduce Christ to the world. Behold your God. The message we should announce is based on the wonderful power of God and His faculty to judge and reward. And this is found in verse 10 of Isaiah chapter 40, but also is is, uh, supported and uh, and, uh, backed up by Revelation chapter 14, specifically the verses 6 and 7 of Revelation 14. The gospel we should preach goes beyond this message. We should also announce that our Redeemer truly cares for us. He is the shepherd who tenderly takes care of his sheep. And this is what uh, verse 11 of, of Isaiah chapter 40 talks about. But also John chapter 10, the whole chapter, the beginning of the chapter, actually the verse, the first 11 verses of the chapter will talk about this good shepherd who is, who is willing and ready to give his life for his sheep, for his sheep. Let us follow the example of people like Simeon, like Anna, like Mary Magdalene, the apostles, and others. They lift lift up their voices to introduce our Savior, Jesus of Nazareth, and that is exactly what you and I need to do. Why? Because the Lord has comforted us. He has shown His mercy to us. He has blessed us with his mercy and now our reaction our natural reaction is to tell others so that they may also be a recipients of his mercy for this we also need strength and this is what isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 talks about isaiah 40 and verse 31 the bible says but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint two facets of god's nature are introduced in chapter 40. facet number one is found in verses 12 through 26 of chapter 40 and here god is described as powerful powerful and that is why he is the only one worthy of praise then in verses 27 through 31, God is introduced and presented as merciful. And merciful because He strengthens those who trust Him. Isaiah uses questions to glorify God's power. Very similar to what Job does in his book. And this, you will, these questions you will find in verses 12 through 14 of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah also explains that no one can compare to God. The Lord is never tired, and those who trust Him will never be tired. And this is good news for us, friends, because the same strength that God wants to give to those who follow Him, He wants to give you, He wants to give me, so that we may be able to do the service that He he has called us to do in this world. This will bring us to the ultimate reaction, the natural reaction to the blessings of God that has to do with what we do with so much that we have received from Him. And this is found in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 19. We are going to talk about worship now. Listen to what the prophet says, Isaiah 40 and verse 19. The workman molds an image. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. What is this talking about? What, did, what is Isaiah talking about this now? The context of Isaiah 40 and verse 19 is the verse right before that, verse 18. Verse 18, the question is here from the prophet. He says, To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to Him? 
here's the important question friends here's the important question that we have to we have to ask ourselves when it comes to verse 18 and 19 of, of isaiah chapter chapter 40. can we worship god the the almighty god through an image i'll give you a moment to think about that question can we worship god the almighty god through an image israel Imagine God as a calf, and this you will find in Exodus chapter 32, specifically in verse 4, and also 1 Kings chapter 13, verses uh, 28. So Exodus 32 and verse 4, and 1 Kings 13 and verse 28. They made this image of God to adore, the, to adore God through the image. That was what they did. But you know what happened here? God emphatically rejected worship through images. He didn't like what, what Israel did. And remember that Israel was just rescued by God. And the next thing they did was to shape an image to worship God according to their knowledge through that image, which God said no. And you will find this, God saying no through images uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, and Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. Um, again, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. And Exodus 20 verses 4 and 5 so God said no to images God has said no to images and God is saying the same thing today no 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 to images the Bible is clear about the uselessness of idols and those who worship them not just the idols but also those who worship them and you can read for these Psalm 115 verses 4 through 8 Psalm 115 verses 4 through 8. Because this is the reality, friend. We may be worshiping something through an image, but certainly we are not worshiping God. Remember that an idol may not necessarily have a physical sh shape because this is the reality. Anything that man loves and trusts in, instead of loving the Lord and trusting wholly in Him, becomes an idol. Dear friend, God wants to give you strength so that you may be forgiven through His mercy. And by giving you this comfort that forgiveness brings, the, the natural reaction that you and I need to experience is to tell everyone about this merciful God. I want to close this, this to, today's study with a beautiful quote that is found in the books Prophets and Kings. This is from page uh, 722. The author of this book brings a good conclusion for the study for this week. This is what the book says, Prophets and Kings. Many were the messages of comfort given the church by the prophets of old. Come for ye, come for ye, my people, Isaiah 40 verse 1, was Isaiah's commission from God, and with the commission were given wonderful visions that have been the believers' hope and joy through all the centuries that have followed despised of men, persecuted, forsaken. God's children in every age have nevertheless been sustained by His sure promises. Dear friend, the promises of God will bring you the strength that you need to keep on going. The promises of God will fill your soul with the power you need to tell everyone there is a God who is seeking for them. I want to invite you to look, to seek for opportunities so that you may tell people about this loving, powerful, and merciful God. May the Lord bless you and let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much again for being so merciful to us. Thank you, Lord, because you give us mercy, not because we, need, we deserve it, but because we need it. And today, Father, we pray for your power because that's what we also need to keep on going. We need to to pray, Lord, that you will sustain us throughout our lives so that we may be able to react to that love in a positive way. I pray, Lord, that you will give us opportunities to tell people that you are a loving God and you are expecting your people to come back to Him. Father, please bless us and be with us. Thank you for Jesus. We pray all this in the name of our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.